So some crazy ass people here in Colorado are trying to pass new laws that would make it illegal for me to go pick up one of these little jars. What in the actual f So a new bill in Colorado called HB 1317 just passed an initial vote 13 to 0, and this thing could destroy the entire concentrate market in Colorado. The people who are behind this bill have some crazy plans that you won't even believe, and these laws could even affect laws in other states too. And we're about to cover it all right now. What's up and welcome back to The Strange Show. My name is Matt, I'm a medical marijuana patient, a cannabis industry employee, I love to learn everything I can about weed, and that's exactly what we do on this channel. So if you want to learn some new fun facts about weed every week and keep up with all the latest weed laws, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything. In this video we're going to look at exactly what HB 1317 is and what it would change. We're also going to look at the shady characters that introduced this bill and take a look at what their true intentions really are. Then we're going to cover when these new laws might go into effect and how you can do your part to stop this crazy bill before it becomes an actual law and ruins everything for all of us. So first, let's just look at everything that would change in Colorado if this law passes. County coroners would now have to conduct toxicology screenings for cannabis on anyone 24 or younger who dies by suicide, overdose, or in an accident, and then report that data to the state. They want to spend over $3.4 million of state funds to conduct an entirely new analysis of the pre-existing research on high-potency THC marijuana and concentrate, so they can make policy policy recommendations for possible new restrictions in upcoming years. A statewide tracking system would be put into place that would track all purchases in an attempt to cut down on dispensary hopping. Doctors now would be required to conduct a full assessment of their patient's physical and mental health history before they could make a medical marijuana recommendation. Medical marijuana patients 18 to 20 years old would only be able to get medical cards if two different doctors gave in-person visits and diagnosed them as having a debilitating or disabling medical condition. Medical and recreational customers would both have new restrictions on concentrates, but medical cannabis patients would have their concentrate purchase limits reduced by 80%. And lastly, it would require that all cannabis concentrates be sold in individual doses no larger than one-tenth of a gram. And before I even touch on why 99.9% .9 of this bill is absolute bullshit, you might be asking yourself who would even want to pass this into a law anyways? Who could think that this is a good idea? This bitch. Thornton Democratic State Representative Yadira Caraveo. This lady was a career pediatrician, then became a politician. She hates weed, and she's on a mission to get rid of it any way she can. And this is not the first time she has tried. Earlier this year, she tried unsuccessfully to change Colorado cannabis law, and when that first bill failed horribly, she just rebranded it into what we're seeing now. So a few months ago, this same lady was trying to say that high potency weed should be illegal because it causes all kinds of mental health issues and basically makes people go crazy. She was asking the state to completely ban the sale of any marijuana products that contain more than 15% THC. So that would have not only made all concentrates illegal, it would have basically made all commercially grown strains illegal since they all have way more than 15%. She also wanted to make it to where you could only buy a pre-designated amount of certain products that would all have to be approved by a doctor. She even wanted to get rid of signs that were advertising dispensaries and all kinds of other crazy stuff. But the attitude when she brought this up a few months ago was just like, ah, who cares? This lady is obviously nuts and this stuff will never pass. Plus a bunch of legalization advocates quickly pointed out that what she was trying to do was actually unconstitutional because the state's medical marijuana program and recreational legalization were both enacted by constitutional amendments. Everybody sort of thought it was ridiculous to say that weed makes you crazy, and the first bill she introduced was worded in a way that was very vague, and it didn't even really make sense. Which isn't really surprising. I mean, the lady who introduced it was a pediatrician until the very end 
end of 2018 when she ran for state representative. She is very new to politics and she has no experience with cannabis or cannabis laws. So that first bill was quickly thrown out, but now this lady is back and she's coming for weed again. This new bill is coming from the same lady and it's just another attempt to squash the cannabis industry in Colorado. She's making a lot of the same claims that she did in February, but this time she's really pushing a new plot twist on it. This time she says we have to outlaw all these products because she claims that all the underage people are getting addicted to cannabis concentrates. And she says that concentrates are to blame for an increase in depression and suicide in Colorado teens. Now to a lot of us, this probably just sounds like an angry mother who is complaining about weed, but really has no idea what she's talking about. And that's why a lot of us in Colorado's cannabis industry have started referring to this law as Karen's law. And you might be thinking, but this stuff in Karen's law isn't even true, and there is no research or evidence to back any of this up. And you're right, these are all lies. There is no evidence or research to show that any of the stuff she is saying could be true, but despite that she is still getting a lot of support on this bill and the reason why is probably going to piss you off. So in 2020 we saw a lot of new cannabis legalization pass. 2020 was great for weed but besides being a good year for weed laws 2020 was a crazy year for politics in general. We have seen a lot of grown-ass adults who are in charge of running the whole country arguing with each other like children. It seems like these politicians will argue anything that goes against their party and they're always looking for a new fight. It's rare that the two main parties agree on anything and this Karen's law is just another example of that. And since this has become an us versus them kind of political argument, we are seeing other Republican politicians come out to defend this crazy ass bill even though it makes no sense. Last Tuesday on May 18th, we had the first hearing for Karen's Law at the state capitol. The hearing lasted eight hours and the sign-up sheet to speak ended up having like 200 names on it. A lot of medical marijuana patients were giving testimonies on how they need these products and how these laws would hurt them. Parents of medical marijuana patients were speaking about their kids and they were explaining how cannabis has been the only thing that helps them have a normal life and how this bill would be devastating for their families. But they weren't the only people who had something to say. We also had to listen to a bunch of Karens as well. There were a lot of stories from these worried Karen parents that sounded very similar. They all had these crazy stories of how getting addicted to concentrates ruined their kids' lives, but almost every single one of these people also admitted that their kids also had a real addiction to some actual drugs at the same time all of this was taking place. But still, they thought it was the concentrates who ruined little Billy. There was even one Colorado state senator who got up and made a statement as an angry Karen parent. Republican Senator Kevin Priola is the other politician who is heavily supporting this bill with Queen Karen. This guy stood up in front of everyone and claimed that his son started using weed at a young age and has been addicted to it for five years. He claimed that he would have to lock up his keys and his wallet to keep his son from stealing them to fuel his horrible weed addiction. He said he had to kick his son out of the family house to quote, protect our other kids. He went on to claim, he can't quit. I've offered him $1,000 a month to pass a drug test, to match it and invest it for him. He can't quit. Even though there's no science or data to back it up, the people behind this bill say that teens are facing increasing chances of addiction, depression, and even suicide because of the concentrates being sold in dispensaries. This all seems crazy, I know, and it seems like it could never pass. But the initial vote already passed 13 to 0, and a lot of people in Colorado's cannabis industry are worried that this thing could actually go all the way into law. So I thought after this first vote it was going to be postponed for a while, but apparently yesterday they had another vote, and I didn't even know about it until it was over. And the second vote passed again on a 7 to 4 vote, and those four that voted against it didn't even actually vote against, they just voted to amend it. So, so far we've had no one stand up and say, look, we can't have this, this is ridiculous, we gotta throw it out. We've just had four people say that, 
All right, this seems mostly good, but we should just change a few little parts. Even the second passing vote doesn't mean this is a law yet, and I don't think the bill is even requesting that this go into effect until like January 1st, 2023. So this is still ongoing, but it's moving really fast. But we will still probably see some changes to this if it ever hopes to actually get passed. But the way Karen's law is worded now is just ridiculous. First, they want to spend $3.4 million just to give an opinion on research that we've already done. They don't even want to do research. Why do they need over $3.4 million? And they say flat out that they just want to look at this research so they can give new recommendations for new restrictions, not so that they can give recommendations just based on what the data says is best or what the science says is best. So they only want to look at this to report why we should have new restrictions. This would also hurt patients who already use this medicine and it would heavily restrict what patients can buy and even who is eligible for a med card in the first place. Packaging concentrates in tiny ass containers that hold less than one dab doesn't make any sense either. How is that supposed to keep someone from getting addicted? All that would do is make a whole lot more garbage. It would make the prices of concentrates go way up. It would probably make a lot of small mom and pop companies go out of business. And it would definitely make the black market concentrate game explode to meet this new demand. The tracking system is the only part of this that really makes sense to me and everything else seems like it would be horrible for medical patients in this state. And remember, it's not just patients like me who use cannabis to treat pain from a chronic injury or something. So many of these patients are children like Sophia who have had their lives changed or even saved by concentrates. And this medicine that they use every day would become severely restricted and they might even end up losing their medical card altogether and getting new ones would be very hard. And if you think these laws should not be passed, there are some ways that you can help. I put a link in the description where you can fill out a quick form to let the lawmakers know that you do not support this bill. And that's a really quick and easy way to share your opinion. I have also listed all of the House Committee's names, email addresses, and phone numbers. And if you think Karen's law should not be passed, please write a well-worded email explaining why and send it to everybody on that list. Call them on the phone and tell them why we don't want this. I mean, they are public servants and we need to hold these people accountable for what they're trying to do to the patients. I also made this whole video about how the FDA is trying to make blunt wraps illegal, and this video where we compare expensive cookies weed to some cheap budget weed to see if we can even tell the difference. And don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up with everything that's going on with all of these new crazy cannabis laws. Peace.